good afternoon. Uh, Lee Harris, Mayor of Shelby County, pleased to be here on behalf of the Joint Task Force. First, uh, really good news from the FDA yesterday that they would approve vaccination for 12 to 15 year olds. Uh, this is, again, very good news and potentially transformational for uh, the vaccine program. It's also a reminder about how important it is to get the word out to families and to households about the importance of considering a vaccination. As you may have heard me talk about before, we recently launched the COVID Community Council uh, for precisely this purpose. The COVID Council will have a variety of perspectives represented, including teenagers, because it's gonna be critical to convince moms and dads uh, to take their preteens and their teenagers uh, for the vaccination. And I can think of no better advocates on behalf of preteens and teenagers than those teenagers in those very households. Furthermore, we plan to uh, put boots on the ground, as it has been said, and plan to continue to expand community engagement efforts uh, throughout the summer. We'll knock on doors and do whatever it takes. Uh, in fact, let's put up the slide. So as you see, we'll ramp up efforts uh, starting on Thursday and Friday of this week. And so if you wanna volunteer, we'll be hitting the 38106 neighborhood, which is South Memphis, to bring uh, the message directly to uh, folks in that zip code where the uptake has been uh, too low and we plan to try to work hard to turn that around. Okay, you can take it down now. In addition to that, uh, I'll just uh, put a reminder that the health directives are scheduled to come out every 30 days. And so the next health directive is scheduled to be released tomorrow. And um, that last health directive promised a shift in approaches from a mandatory approach to a approach more consistent with personal responsibility. In fact, just to remind everybody, let's put up the slide with the language from the April health directive. And so you can see it on the screen. This was in our April health directive. And it says, if the county does not enter into a third surge over the next 30 days, the next health directive will provide highly recommended guidance on continuing safe practices for people and businesses that will slow and end the transmission of COVID-19, which continues to be a direct and deadly threat to the people of Shelby County. The more steps you and your family take to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the safer you and others will be. Again, please note that if case numbers and other indicators remain stable over the next 30 days, the next health directive, which will be issued in May 2021, will shift from a mandatory approach to a recommendation approach. And so on that score, the good news is that we did not experience a surge over the last 30 days. In fact, our case count over the last 30 days is relatively consistent with our case count over the previous 30 days. However, even though our case count may be stabilizing and our vaccine count is going up, after 14 months, it's important for everyone to remember that conditions on the ground could change and we all should always be prepared to make adjustments. There's light at the end of the tunnel, but we still have a long way to go and we need everyone uh, to try uh, from where they sit uh, to do as best they can uh, to talk about the vaccine and to convince others to consider vaccination. With that, I'll turn it over to David Sweat, thanks. Thank you, Mayor. And just to go over the numbers where we stand today, 96,863 cases have been reported in Shelby County during the epidemic, and that's an increase of 79 new cases yesterday. We've had 1,632 residents who have died from COVID-19. That's an increase of two new deaths reported yesterday. And in the surrounding counties, we've had 7,371 people to be diagnosed in Tipton County. We have 5,090 cases diagnosed in Fayette County, Tennessee, 21,580 cases diagnosed in DeSoto County, Mississippi, and then 5,685 cases diagnosed in Crittenden County, Arkansas, in the five-county area. 
Now we've also continued to make good progress in the vaccine campaign, although we would like for the uh, increases to be higher every day than what they maybe are, we're very grateful to the 325,640 people who have been vaccinated and are documented in the tennis system as of last evening. That includes 87,904 people who have one dose of a two-dose series um, on board, and then 237,736 of your neighbors in Shelby County who are fully vaccinated either with a two-dose series or by virtue of receiving Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Now, there are a couple of developments over the last uh, couple of days that are important for us to keep our eyes on around the world. The World Health Organization did declare the B1617 strain uh, that is predominantly circulating in India right now and causing a lot of the public health crisis in the subcontinent of India that has now been declared a global variant of public health concern. So our sequencing uh, team and our uh, contact tracing isolation team, certainly we've picked up on one instance of that virus in Shelby County, which has been isolated. And at the moment we see no further evidence of spread of that virus in the community, but we continue to work with the laboratories to sequence and to look for those variants of concern. As you know, we've talked in the past that the B117 virus, which originated in the United Kingdom, is the dominant virus in Shelby County. It's highly transmissible, and uh, it's also potentially more lethal than the virus that we had been confronted with most of the past 14 months. And we wanna, once again, just remind people that the only thing that has kept us safe from having our case numbers explode due to these highly transmissible variants in our midst is the fact that more than 325,000 people have been vaccinated. So for more uh, um, information about our progress on the vaccine campaign, I invite Doug McGowan to the podium. Thank you, David. As David said, we continue to make progress. We've given 563,000 vaccines. Now more than 330,000 people have been vaccinated. 240,000 of those have been fully vaccinated. Uh, we still have more work to do. Uh, we are not yet over the 30% threshold of the total population that's fully vaccinated. Some of our other peer counties across the state have actually surpassed 40% of the overall population and 30% have reached two vaccinations. Uh, we have still administered more uh, by physical count of vaccinations, but we still have some work to do. Uh, yesterday, the FDA approved the 12 and up vaccine of the Pfizer uh, for uh, anybody who's ages 12 and over. Uh, before we can begin administering that here locally, we have to wait for the state to give us their final approval and any guidance that they have. As soon as we get that green light, which we expect to happen tomorrow, uh, we will begin vaccinating the very next day. So we anticipate as early as Thursday, we could be offering vaccinations to uh, people as young as 12 years old. As we mentioned, uh, our demand seems to continue to be waning. And as David talked about, the mass vaccination sites uh, are probably not long. Uh, all across the country and instead we'll be going to smaller points of delivery. So here in Shelby County, we will be backing down several of those sites this month. As you know, the Pipkin building on the 19th of May uh, will be the last time that the DOD and the FEMA component operate out of there. The city of Memphis and our partners at UCH will continue to operate the Pipkin site as a public vaccination. It will just have somewhat lower capacity. Also, the pod that we have at Faith Baptist out in Bartlett uh, will uh, cease operations after they uh, finish vaccinating on May 21st. So those are the two uh, changes that we know of now. Demand is gonna help us determine uh, the time, the days, and whether or if we close additional public vaccination pods. Uh, but we will continue to do community-based pods, homebound and homeless work. And we are also looking to partner with other organizations 
as I mentioned, as we go to a more refined approach with smaller groups and taking vaccine to groups where we believe there's an opportunity for people to take advantage of it. I would like people to remember that there are more than 100 locations now around the county where you can get a COVID-19 vaccination. You can find those locations on the covid19.memphistn.gov. There's also a national operation called VaxFinder that will help you find a vaccine of both the type and location that you need. Uh, for anyone who is homebound, you can also uh, log on to the website and register for a homebound vaccination. And uh, we would encourage people to take advantage of that. There are many uh, folks now in that game of vaccinating the homebound. And finally, uh, as we mentioned, uh, part of our incentive is a sweepstakes where you can take home a new car or a new truck. Um, there's still a chance for you to do so through the end of the month. Anybody who's already been vaccinated, we'd ask that you go online and register. Anybody who has yet to be vaccinated, we'd ask that you go on out, get a vaccination, and then register. All you'll need is proof that you were vaccinated and proof of residency at the conclusion, and you too could be a winner of a brand new car or truck. So with that, I will stop and take any questions that people may have. Andy Rock, Fox 13. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I was wondering when you do begin to offer the vaccine to children 12 and 15, how will you verify their age? And I also have a follow-up question. Well, so the, uh, there's, there's not going to have any ID. They'll be accompanied by a uh, uh, parent or a guardian. Uh, which will verify that they are in fact the age that the parents or the guardians say they are. Uh, if they do happen to have uh, an ID, then obviously they can present that if they, if they chose to do so. But remember, IDs are not required as part of uh, vaccination. All right, thank you. And my second question is about the car sweepstakes. Have you seen um, a positive impact on the number of people who have come to get a vaccine since you've announced? That. We have, um, and it's not as if we have seen a huge uptick in vaccines. We've stayed relatively stable, but uh, I will use the Pipkin, our community vaccination site, as an example. Uh, there are other community vaccination sites just like ours uh, who had been doing about the same level that we are doing. Uh, and in the last few weeks, they, those have tapered off dramatically. We have not seen that dramatic of a taper here uh, in Memphis and Shelby County. And so uh, we believe that, that some of that is attributed to, uh, you know, obviously the incentive, but much of it is attributed to the work that we're doing here uh, with the COVID uh, community and trying to get the word out to everybody about getting vaccines. So there's equal parts incentive, but uh, that's also just about folks coming out to get vaccinated because it's the right thing to do. Kelly Roberts, WMC. Hello, my first question, um, listening to that wording from the current health directive about um, avoiding that, that surge in cases and that the next health directive coming in May 2021 um, would switch to the highly recommended and individual responsibility focus. Um, I know you guys kind of touched on it a little bit, but could you emphasize what you feel like kept us from experiencing that surge that uh, could have prevented us from moving to more of the uh, highly recommended stage of the health directives. Well, I'll turn it over to David, but I do wanna brag on our community a little bit. We have retained a very high capacity for testing. Uh, the sequencing that David talked about is no small feat. We have been out in front of sequencing uh, long before many of the other communities in our country. And so we've been very aggressive about that. And then we have a plentiful amount of vaccine. And so people taking advantage of all of those things, I think is helping to keep us out there. But David, I'll let you talk to the specifics. Yes, thank you. And <clears throat> Doug's absolutely right that the major reason that our case numbers are holding steady really is the vaccination campaign. So 330,000 plus people have been vaccinated and about uh, an equal number of people or a slightly smaller number of people, well, adults remain susceptible. Now, children is another population and there's a couple of hundred thousand kids 
who remain susceptible to this virus. So we've still got a ways to go to protect the entire community, but the fact that 330 plus thousand people have been vaccinated in the community is what is holding our numbers steady. With these highly transmissible viruses, without that, we would be well into a surge at this point due to these highly transmissible variants. But because the vaccine protects against them, or at least the B117 variant, then people who've been vaccinated can be exposed to that virus and not get sick. And actually, I've been wondering myself uh, over the past few weeks, given how much of that virus is swirling around us, I wonder how many times I've actually encountered that virus and my body's fought it off and it's not been a problem because I've been vaccinated. And that's an experience that's going on for more than 330,000 folks here in Shelby County. Um, we still have a ways to go, but, um, but I would tribute the, the stability of our numbers right now in the face of those highly transmissible viruses. 100% I would put that on the vaccines. Thank you. And David, this might be a question for you too, just as um, a healthcare professional. For those parents, now that vaccines um, will soon be available to those 12 to 15, for those parents who just haven't made up their mind yet, what would you tell them? Um, obviously, a lot of uh, parents take their kids to get va vaccinated, a lot of vaccines mandatory um, for schools or what have you. Um, in comparison to those vaccines that kids have been getting, you know, for years and years and years, what would you say to those parents, unsure, um, or at least just in the decision making process uh, about the COVID-19 vaccine? Sure. Well, thank you for the question. And uh, actually, I had this exact experience already early the, earlier this morning. A, uh, a person who knows me in another state called me. He has sons who are in the age group between 12 and 15 years old. And he had a person in his orbit of friends who is uh, against the idea of vaccinating the children and was trying to persuade him not to do it. And he called me and said, David, what do you think? And so here's what I told him. And it's what I would tell anyone. The technology that we are using for the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine is a really important one here because it's the only one that's been applied for use in children as young as 12. But that technology, that approach, has been under research for more than 20 years. And they began developing vaccines, vaccine candidates against SARS viruses with this technology in 2002 during the first SARS epidemic. So researchers in the world of building vaccines have been working on this vaccine for more than 20 years. And tweaking how it would be how how to manufacture these things how to train the messenger rna in the vaccine to elicit the appropriate immune response and so the idea that this is somehow experimental or has been rushed is false it's not been rushed it's been worked on for more than 20 years and it's been very carefully researched that's the first point the second point is something that uh, Dr. Tom Frieden, who is a former director of the CDC, I like the way that he explains what does the vaccine do. Uh, the vaccine sends a message, it uses messenger RNA to send a message to the immune system. And the message is, here's what a COVID virus looks like. This is how you would recognize it and how to attack it and then the components of the vaccine are eliminated from the body. They don't remain in the body at all, but the information that was encoded in that RNA has been uploaded into the database. So really, if you think about it, it's kind of like this. You get an email with new information, your body gets an email <laughs> with new information, and the information is, how do I fight COVID? Okay, read the email, added the profile to my immune system, delete the email, goes away. And that's exactly what goes on with this vaccine. And so uh, we have a high degree of confidence in these vaccines. And uh, I've got an epidemiologist in my, shop, in, my, um, in my program, has a 12 year old son. She's asking me today, how soon will Doug let me get him vaccinated? And uh, you know, like I say, I've had a friend 
from New York called today asking me these same questions. In both instances, um, you know, I would say that there's a lot of reason to believe these vaccines are totally safe. Fred Broder, Local 24. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, kind of a follow up to David uh, or Doug. Uh, how much of just the shot in the arm is this potentially when we're thinking big picture, considering that there's 50,000 12 to 15 year olds now eligible and, and how will that potentially help the big picture goal in the coming weeks? Well, I'll answer as an epidemiologist and invite Doug back. Uh, adding another 50,000 potential people to the pool of folks who could get vaccinated will make it easier for us to get closer to 700,000 folks vaccinated. So we're, we're grateful for that, but Doug? Well, it's, uh, the point is a good one. We're very excited. That's 50,000 additional people. And um, as you know, uh, young people have led the way in so many uh, different uh, aspects of our lives throughout our history. And this is an opportunity for them again to uh, show the way and show that they are ready um, to move on. And one of the ways that they can do that is by getting vaccinated. So this is a a leadership opportunity for young people as well. And uh, we are incredibly hopeful that they will take us up on that, that they will reach out to the adults in their lives and ask them uh, to get them to a point of vaccination so that they can be vaccinated. Uh, this is an important thing for us. It's important in their development to get back to normal and all the activities that they like. So they have a lot to gain by getting vaccinated. The more uh, people that are vaccinated, the more spectators we can have at their sporting events, the more spectators we can have at band and, and theater and concerts and all of those kinds of things. So there's a lot of reasons why we're excited about young people being eligible for this. Uh, and we also know that, as David said, this cohort is still susceptible. The more of them that we make less susceptible, the better for everyone. Thanks. And as a follow up, I know it was discussed on the outset, but for those wondering what this next health directive could mean in regards to mask mandates and business restrictions, can anyone share a little more light on that today? Thank you. Mayor, do you want to tackle that one? So I'm not going to get out in front of the, the announcement to, tomorrow. Suffice it to say that the discussions have been robust and ongoing for the last 30 days, and, and there will be more on that tomorrow. Uh, what I will also just uh, piggyback on Doug and, and David is to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm a parent of a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old, and I'm encouraged by the prospect that they'll soon be eligible to take the vaccine here in Memphis and Shelby County. And one of the reasons why it's so important for my 12- and 15-year-old to, to take this vaccine is because I realize that um, my children have uh, borne a significant burden across these last 14 months. Uh, they have uh, uh, lots. Uh, they have missed uh, opportunities for uh, in-person instruction. Uh, they have missed uh, social events, birthday parties. They have missed sporting events. They have missed opportunities for development and socializing. Uh, these are all critical ingredients uh, that we have the prospect of returning to our kids by considering vaccination. So. Uh, I am, um, uh, you know, I, I can't wait uh, to get my 12-year-old and 15-year-old uh, an appointment to take a shot because it is one of the ways that we can return uh, childhood uh, to them. Laura Testino, Commercial Appeal. Hey, um, one question has been touched on a little bit, um, but just it you know, seems sort of just like the expectation set by last month's health directive is that masking will become a personal uh, recommendation or personal choice um, here soon. Um, and as was the trajectory, then at that last month's health directive, uh, B117, um, more transmissible, potentially more deadly variant, is now most dominant in Shelby County. Um, and without a mask requirement um, being, you know, potentially not having a mask mandate, is there a concern that cases could rise um, among those who aren't vaccinated, like um, kids younger than 12 or people who still don't have immunity from a recent infection? And I'll have a follow-up. So I think we will continue to encourage uh, everyone to do everything that they can to remain safe. And that number one recommendation is to get the vaccine because it will protect 
uh, or give some protection, particularly uh, against the severe, severest consequences uh, that could come from COVID-19 or the strains. In addition to that, um, obviously folks that choose not to get vaccination uh, will have to undertake a variety of other uh, recommendations that come from the CDC and will come from our local and state health departments. But the reality is, is that our, you know, our, our cases are relatively stable. We continue to take perspective, but our cases are relatively stable. And even the seven day uh, average as we stand here today is down from the seven day average at the time of our last uh, health directive. Um, so uh, the, the, the key when it comes to the variants in my view, and again, it's just m my, my perspective, is that it could have an effect on our ability to reach herd immunity. Um, but we've got to keep working towards this. That only speaks to the fact that we've got to keep working towards this for many, many weeks, uh, if not many, many months. That this is not, you know, over and done tomorrow or uh, with this health directive or with the next health directive, but that we've got to prepare, be prepared to continue the course and continue to work at this. All right, um, and then my follow-up is just more of a technical question. Um, I know that we mentioned as soon as Thursday for um, that recommendation to come down um, from, or solid recommendation to come down from the state as far as expanding to 12 to 15, but is there, um, you know, can parents start uh, making appointments yet or should they wait for that word to come down officially on Thursday? Well, we think the word will come down tomorrow late in the afternoon, so, if you want to start making plans, uh, I would do that for Thursday. I anticipate that that will come down in time for people to plan on Thursday. As you know, we have many uh, of our sites don't need an appointment. And quite frankly, there's no waiting uh, when you get there, even if you don't have an appointment. So uh, rather than making an appointment, I would make plans during your day to come on Thursday if you desire to do that, or Friday or Saturday. Um, because we believe that by the end of the day, uh, tomorrow we will have that permission and then as we've said all along, as soon as we get that, the very next day we'll begin to offer that. So hopefully that answers the question. Hannah Grabenstein, MLK 50. Good afternoon. Um, I have two questions. My first is for Mayor Harris. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit more about the get out the vote or the door knocking, I guess, get out the vote X campaign. Um, I know it's starting this week. Is this the first one? What, you know, what will it entail? Will people have vaccines with them at all? Will there be helping people get to the um, sites? Will it be about making appointments? Just sort of a little bit more about what the actual campaign will be like. So tomorrow is, or well, this week, sorry, this week is the, I think this is the first door-to-door -door version of this for us uh, on the Shelby County end of things. And so again, we'll be in South Memphis. And so South Memphis 38106 was decided as the zip code because that's where the data showed the uptake was relatively low. Uh, and so the goal is across those days uh, to knock on a relatively um, um, decent amount of 2,000, I think it's 2,000 doors across those two days. So we'll knock on 2,000 doors. And the goal is obviously at as many doors as possible to engage the folks who are uh, in those households about the importance of the vaccination. Uh, we realize that there's not a lot of door-to-door -door activity uh, in a pandemic or even in general. And so we realize that frequently we will not uh, get an opportunity to talk to folks. Um, and so we think that's fair. And so what we're really prepared to do in many of those cases, if not most of those cases, is just drop off information around the safety uh, of vaccination. And so there is a pamphlet, which has you know, been under review from the health department and so forth, that contains um, information about the vaccination. It's uh, trust the trust the facts, uh, I think, or, 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 or some such. Uh, so there's a, uh, there's a, a brochure uh, that contains that information, and uh, so we'll be dropping off that brochure to the vast majority of those households on Thursday or Friday. So anyone wants to just look for another opportunity uh, to help their community, um, you saw the information up on the screen, please take us up on that, and there'll be many more opportunities. Obviously, the COVID Community Council will also meet this week, this week to talk about uh, other uh, opportunities to directly engage the community uh, and continue to get the word out about um, the facts around the vaccine and hopefully persuade more people to take the vaccine. Thank you. And then my follow-up is just a really quick question. Um, I suspect this will be for David. Um, in terms of the vaccine that will be given to 12 to 15-year-olds, can you just confirm this is the exact same dosage, exact same you know composition as the vaccine that adults are getting? Uh, my understanding is yes. <clears throat> They've tested it at the dosages 
and volumes uh, that are given to adults down to age 12. Um, now, I don't know in the future, I can't speak to if they um, study younger age groups, that they may change you know, the formulation, not the formulation, but the, the, the amount <coughs> that is given, I don't know. But the current w um, extension would make the vials that are currently in our possession available to people as young as 12, and it would be the same dose as an adult to, to receive. We are out of time. Are there any closing messages today? Just want to say thank you to everybody who's been vaccinated, and I want to say thank you to all of the community for doing the other things too, right? So we've had an excellent track record um, since the mask ordinance and mask uh, uh, mandate went into effect last, uh, right around July 4th of last year, and that we've had a lot of people in Shelby County internalize that behavior of wearing a mask. We've, throughout, we've had good um, acceptance of social distancing and hand washing and, and other infection control measures. And then we've, uh, you know, we're grateful to the folks who have been vaccinated. So for everybody who's done everything they could to protect themselves, their families, their loved ones, their coworkers, and the community as a whole, we just want to say thank you and continue the course. We'll look forward to speaking with you on Thursday. Thanks, everyone.